evening and uh, welcome. I'm Council Member Ben Kalos. I have the privilege of representing the Upper East Side, East Harlem, Roosevelt Island. Uh, you can tweet anytime at Ben Kalos. I want to thank all of you for joining this evening on our election information system session. Uh, just a reminder, this is a nonpartisan event and we are not endorsing any candidate or party. It's my hope that by educating everyone on all the aspects of the voting process, we can mobilize more voters than ever before ahead of one of ahead of the most important election of our lifetimes. This is literally a matter of life and death. Uh, New York State has a system of fusion voting. This means that some candidates can appear on multiple ballot lines. Since there's been some confusion for voters, I want to start by clarifying that a vote for your preferred candidate counts for that candidate no matter which line you choose. All the votes for that candidate will be aggregated to determine who wins the popular vote in New York. This, New York, th this year, New York has a new rule regarding fusion voting. Any political party must receive at least 130,000 votes or 2% of the total vote, whichever is higher in this November's election or they will lose their automatic ballot line in New York. Uh, over the next hour, we'll hear from our elected officials, including uh, New York State Attorney General Letitia James, uh, State Senator Liz Kruger, Assembly Member Rebecca Seawright, as well as other elected officials who may join us over the course of the evening. We also have representatives from uh, Democracy NYC, one of my favorite city agencies, uh, Vote Early New York, and uh, the Democratic Commissioner for the State Board of Elections, uh, Doug Kellner. I, I want to thank everyone for joining. And I also want to thank our co-sponsors, Manhattan Borough President Gail Brewer, Assembly Members Epstein, Godfrey, Port, and Rodriguez, as well as Council Members uh, Powers, Ayala, and uh, Rodriguez, as well as community boards, organizations, and neighborhood associations. Uh, residents have submitted questions on everything from the ballot counting process to what to do when you haven't received or can't track your ballot, so stay tuned. Uh, to get things started tonight, uh, please welcome me in uh, joining, in, in, in welcoming our New York State Attorney General, Letitia James. Thank you, Council Member Kalos, for that introduction and for having me here for this important information session about the upcoming election. Before I get into the election, I'm urging everyone who has not uh, filled out the census form, please fill out the census form. As you know, um, yesterday the Supreme Court did not want to hear a, a case involving the extension of the time limit to collect data. Um, it's really critically important that individuals fill out the census. The census is critical to reapportionment. The census is critical uh, to uh, the amount of uh, resources that we receive from Washington, D.C. Um, at one point in time, we had 45 representatives in New York State. We now have 27. There's a possibility, given our low response rate, uh, that we might lose maybe one or two congressional districts. Uh, we can ill afford um, to lose any congressional districts. So I urge everyone uh, to please, please fill out the census. It's confidential information. Uh, and again, in our enumeration clause does not speak to anyone's immigration status. Um, as you know, we were successful in the Supreme Court in removing the citizenship question. And so please, 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 everyone matters and therefore everyone should be counted. Please fill out the census. I'd also like to acknowledge all of my colleagues in government and thank them for their work to help ensure New York New Yorkers exercise their right to vote. I'd also like to thank the organizations that are represented here today. Early Vote New York, Citizens Action Committee, New York City and New York State Board of Elections, Community Boards 6, 8, and 11. Your work to help um, voters understand their options on how they can vote um, this year has never been more important. We've all been seeing um, on the, the television um, and uh, obviously online, um, the long lines all across this country. I just want you to know that the Democratic Attorney Generals, we've been filing briefs in states all throughout this nation, challenging uh, these really, really regressive um, voter suppression laws. We've been successful in some, most of them we've been successful, but we've lost a few, um, but we're gonna continue to, again, defend democracy. Um, and so I just want you to know that all the, off, the New York State Office of Attorney General is very much involved in a voter initiative that we um, started with other states um, as part of our effort uh, to protect the most precious right, and that is the right to vote. Um, I don't think I have to remind you um, that in November, the votes we cast for governor uh, will determine the strength or weakness of our democracy for years to come. We know that voter suppression efforts have been underway for years to keep many voters of color from casting a ballot, but we never thought those efforts would take root in the White House until now. And I will use every tool at my disposal um, in this Office of Attorney General to fight back. Um, uh, on August 25th, the off my office filed a lawsuit 
to stop this administration's attempts to dismantle the United States Postal Service uh, and disrupt operations in an attempt to undermine the agency's ability uh, to handle what is expected to be a record number of mail-in ballots this November because of COVID-19 pandemic. We were successful um, in that effort. We filed a motion for a preliminary injunction asking the court to quickly stop the administration from continuing down the path of slowing down mail operations in the lead up to election day. We also know um, that it not only slowed down um, absentee ballots, uh, but um, it prevented individuals from getting um, uh, resources and, and their medicine. Um, and uh, that's why we decided to stand up. Um, the district court on September 27th uh, granted our preliminary injunction uh, which is national in scope. And we joined with Pennsylvania um, in, uh, again, filing that lawsuit. Our suit filed against uh, the president, as well as the Postal Service, as well as the poster, Postmaster General, uh, Louis DeJoy, uh, came a day after the Postmaster General finished testifying before Congress, in which he refused to reverse policies that have slowed mail operations across the nation. I spoke to a number of mail carriers, not only in New York City, but all across the state of New York. Um, and I spoke to a number of postal workers in Buffalo and in Syracuse and Utica, and they indicated to me how those efforts slow down um, the process and how sorting machines were removed. Um, the Postal Service slowdown is nothing more than a voter suppression tactic, um, but this time uh, these authoritarian actions are not only jeopardizing our democracy and our fundamental right to vote, but also the immediate health and financial well-being of Americans across the nation. Um, and I just want you to know that um, we are still in talks. We will, our case will continue, but we are in talks with the Postal Service uh, to restore things um, as they were um, and to ensure that everyone see, receives their absentee ballot in time. I urge everyone, um, starting October 25th, we will start um, early voting um, in New York City. I urge everyone, please, please get out the vote. Um, please remember um, that, that this election is probably the most consequential elections in some time. And it's really critical that everyone exercise their right to vote. Um, and we, the, this office, um, will do everything in our power to stop the president's power grab um, and ensure that every eligible voter has the opportunity to cast a ballot come November. And we are also preparing in the event uh, that um, uh, we cannot determine um, a, whether we uh, um, are working with other states um, because we believe that there will be efforts at polls all over New York. Individuals will be engaging in voter intimidation. Um, and we are also, again, planning um, action after the vote in the event that the President of the United States does not want to engage in a peaceful transition. We are preparing, again, working with other states across the nation in the event that that should happen. But the only way to overcome, overcome that is if all of us get out to vote in record numbers. Um, and I hope that all, all of us do. I thank you so much, Council Member Kalos and all of my colleagues in government. And I thank all of you. Thank you, public. Uh, th thank you, Attorney New York State Attorney General uh, Tish James, uh, same public advocate perhaps was uh, out of an old habit. I uh, just want to thank her for her participation. Uh, I also want to now introduce uh, one, one of our, my, my closest allies and mentors, Senator Liz Kruger, who's been a real partner over the years, whether it's stopping the march of billionaires row into residential neighborhoods, helping homeless, including opening new housing for homo formerly homeless women and children across the street from where I live, and passing the strongest housing laws to protect tenants in our city. Please join us in welcoming State Senator Liz Kruger. Thank you, Ben, and thank you for your constant work on behalf of your constituents and my constituents. And I just want to, um, one, repeat welcome to all the people Attorney General James just named who were co-sponsoring. I don't want to repeat that. I want to thank the Attorney General for her excellent work on behalf of 20 million New Yorkers. And yes, we're under threat every day. So thank goodness we have an Attorney General who actually believes in the rule of law and the Constitution and tries to hold all levels of government to follow those rules, even though you know, the, the, the deck is stacked against her in Washington for the next 20 days or so. And then hopefully we will see a major turnaround. Um, and there's no partisanship here, Ben. So I am very glad to just briefly say how important I think it is to have constantly discussions about voting now 
and the ways people can vote. And I'm very proud that the state legislature over the last two years has made significant improvements in our state laws, allowing people more ways to vote, um, including early voting, which I know you're having a special speaker on, but opens up a whole new opportunity for people um, mm -hmm. right now. And so please, if you don't know about early voting or you're confused, listen carefully. Um, I also want to emphasize how important it is for people to feel that they can get the answers when they have questions. I know my office is being flooded every day with people with questions. I'm sure Rebecca's is also, I'm sure Ben's is also, that people should know there are ways to find out the answers to their questions before election day and to make sure they have that plan of how they are going to vote. Uh, the one thing I just, when I heard Ben giving his presentation before, I just want to quickly point out one thing, which could affect me, for example, as a candidate. Yes, you can, you can run on multiple lines in New York State, as you'll hear more about later, but you could only vote for a candidate on one line. So even though you might see my name on a couple of lines, please don't try to vote for me twice, because you'll cancel your own vote out. So each person that you want to vote for, you have to pick where you want to vote for them. Um, but don't think that you're helping any of us by imagining that you're giving us two votes because the law still says that isn't allowed. Uh, so with that, I will uh, shut up and move on. Thank you, Ben. Uh, thank you to State Senator Liz Krueger. Uh, we'd now like to uh, welcome uh, Assemblymember Rebecca Seawright, who is the first woman to represent uh, New York's 76th Assembly District. Uh, she has been spearheading the Equal Rights Amendment here in uh, New York and the New York State Constitution as the uh, federal government and the states push to do so on a federal level. If you can please join me in welcoming Assemblymember Rebecca Seawright. Assemblymember, you are muted. Thank you. Thank you and good evening and thank you Councilmember Kalos for hosting this very important event tonight. Thank you to Early Vote NY, State Board of Elections, Doug Kellner, Democracy NYC, uh, and my dear friend, our New York State Attorney General Tish James and uh, my Senator, the Chair of the Finance Committee, Liz Kruger. I'm pleased to co-sponsor this important event to educate on all the ways you can access your ballot for elections. Voting is one of the most fundamental rights we have as citizens, and it's essential to our democracy and therefore must be protected at all costs. In the state legislature, we passed early voting in New York State, so all New Yorkers have an access to the polls up to 10 days prior, and you'll hear more about that. Uh, this morning, Congresswoman Maloney and Councilman Kalos and I were on 86th Street. Uh, I'm out every morning at the subway stops listening to voters passing out absentee applications and voters are very confused about all the changes and how to stay safe. So again, I commend you, uh, Councilmember Kalos, for sponsoring this this evening. It's critical for all New Yorkers to have expanded access and opportunity to participate in the democratic process. And that means the ability to vote on the weekend, early morning or late evening. We've been working hard on reforming our election processes. The governor has signed my assembly bill in June, Assembly Bill 9001, to save taxpayers resources and promote efficiency and transparency by allowing candidates to duly satisfy local and state requirements in order to run for office. We strongly supported the executive order by Governor Cuomo expanding voting by mail during the pandemic to ensure that voting could take place with safety in mind. Additionally, I'm a co-sponsor and strongly support the following measures passed in the assembly this session. Automatic voter registration, numerous absentee ballot reforms, but this is only the beginning and I am committed to advancing additional measures to further modernize and strengthen our voting system. Constituents have been contacting my office daily because they've received an absentee ballot with a misprint that reads official absentee military ballot instead of absentee slash military ballot. The ballots are valid and can be used. Take the opportunity to vote early, safely social distance with your fellow voters, 
when there is less chance of long lines and wait times. And if you order an absentee ballot and you're not comfortable putting it in the mail, just drop it in the drop box. Thank you all for this evening. Thank you, Assemblymember Seawright. Uh, I want to make sure folks know that this event is on Zoom where you can submit questions through the Q&A button. It's also being streamed on Facebook and Twitter where we will do our best to answer questions. And this will be recast on Manhattan Neighborhood Network. Uh, so if you have questions, you can always submit them at questions at bencalos.com or to any of the elected officials who spoke here tonight. Uh, but if uh, you have a question that you want the world to know, please make sure to broadcast it and we'll do our best to get to it. We'd like to now invite uh, Deputy Public Advocate for Civic and Community Empowerment, uh, Rose, to please give a, a, some brief remarks on behalf of uh, Public Advocate Jermani Williams, a, a longtime friend, and uh, we, we are both graduates of the specialized high schools and uh, share quite a number of bonds. Thank you, um, Council Member Ben Kailos. Um, like you mentioned, I think this is a very important discussion that we're having today. So thank you and also the Attorney General and all of my other colleagues in government who are co-hosting this event. Um, we've been doing sim several similar events as well citywide, especially after most recently there was the issue with the ballots in Brooklyn, um, specifically with those voters being given an envelope on the inside, the old envelope with an incorrect name. Our office has been working very closely with community groups and community organizations just to ensure that people have been educated about um, some of the errors that have been happening around the election and just to restore voter confidence. So I think um, tonight, even as I'm representing the public advocate, what the message that we want to bring today to this specific forum is that it's so important that people recognize the power in their vote. Um, you know, um, when we talk about the census and the fact that the Supreme Court, you know, SCOTUS just made a decision that has um, ended the census early, you know, and which potentially um, could possibly change the political landscape of our nation. Um, and we know that in New York State, we've already lost 40% of our congressional members over the last 70 years. Um, you know, when we're talking about people and voting and why voting is so important, some of those are some of the talking points that we need to really hit them with. Like, if your vote was not so important, if your power was not in your vote, no one would be trying so hard to take it away from you. So I'm really happy to be here tonight um, to help share that message. I'm, not, I'm familiar with many of the groups that are here. Democracy NYC, they're doing amazing work. Um, Jared, you know, he's a good friend of our office as well, and I think has um, spoken to some of our events. So I'm really excited to be here. I know this is going to be a lively and a good discussion. Um, what I would like to leave everyone with is make sure that if you have not completed your census yet, as the Attorney General say, said, um, you go to my2020census.gov. We have until 6 a.m. Um, Friday, the 16th, to get this done. And we do not need to be in a predicament where we're losing additional congressional members. Um, voting is important. Having seats to vote for is even more important. And um, lastly, as we are approaching the 2020 elections, I would just want to encourage everyone not to forget about our young people. You know, for the first time um, in New York State's history, we've kind of caught up with some of the other um, states who have allowed young people to register to vote at age 16. And we've done that this year by the state legislature passing some phenomenal um, voting rights packages. And we're still waiting for them to pass the New York State Voting Rights Act. But we want to make sure that young people are really, really engaged in this process and that they understand that they can go to the polls and not just young, um, young people, but also LGBTQ and non-gender conforming people and everyone so that they know that the polls are for them. They're for all of us. We all belong there. And when we continue to fight and when we fight together, then we can win. So that is what I will leave you with tonight. Um, I'm looking forward to listening in and I'll be here for some questions if there are any later. Thank you very much. Uh, we'll now get to the main part of our program. We'll be uh, hearing from uh, Nicole Migliore at uh, Democracy NYC, uh, if you can join me in welcoming her. Good evening, everyone. Thank you, Councilmember Kalos, for hosting this. Um, so my name's Nicole. I work on the Democracy NYC team. We're a nonpartisan uh, initiative within the mayor's office. And what we focus on is trying to make elections and voting as accessible and as easy as possible for New Yorkers. And particularly this year, as um, the assembly member and the senator have mentioned, it's been very confusing and a lot has been changing. So it's never been more important 
to host informational sessions such as these and really get the word out. Um, so thanks to the state legislature, there are two really strong ways to vote. In addition to voting on election day, you can vote early, as was mentioned, starts on the 24th and runs to November 1st. Um, so it's only 10 short days away. So really, you know, if you want to vote early, make your plan. Um, the other way is to vote absentee. All New Yorkers are eligible to vote absentee for this election. And the easiest way is to go on nycabsentee.com fill out an application, your request online. And the deadline is the October 27th, but we're really encouraging folks if you want to vote by mail, if you want to vote by absentee to do so as early as possible. And then when you receive your ballot to return it as early as possible so that we can avoid some of the mail delays that we saw in June. Um, we're going to see record turnout. There's a lot of excitement around this election. So all the more reason to make your voting plan, whether voting by mail or voting early or voting on election day, figure it out today. Um, so one of the great things that our team has been able to work on is trying to figure out uh, communications, how to reach folks to let them know about their voting options, uh, particularly folks that perhaps uh, have historically not participated in our elections. So I'm going to share um, two PSAs that we worked on that um, have also been translated into the 12 citywide languages. So after this, I'd be happy to share them out and we really encourage folks to, to use them. So one moment while I share my screen. So the first one I'm going to share is about early voting. And this was made in partnership with the Civic Engagement Commission. New Yorkers now have three ways to vote. By mail, in person on election day, or in person early before election day. Early voting runs from October 24th to November 1st. You can avoid the crowds and vote when you want. To find your early voting location, call the Board of Elections at 1-866-VOTE-NYC or call 311 or visit voting.nyc. Let's show the world. We are New Yorkers. We are voters. I think we need to change the screen that is shared on the uh, Zoom so that we can see the next video if possible. Uh. Let me see, what screen are you seeing right now? We are seeing your Gmail. Oh, sorry, let's see. Mm. Let me try that again, sorry everyone. <laughs> okay. We can see the video. Okay, great. <laughs> um, so uh, I think you got the, the gist of it. Um, I'm, I'd be happy to share this again later, but um, let's see if this, if I can get this one to work more appropriately. Um, is this the a green screen for everyone? Yep. Okay, great. This is um, a Know Your Rights PSA that we put together. Um, so really trying to uh, make sure that folks know that they can bring an interpreter to the poll site as long as they're not an employer or a union rep, that they can bring materials with them, that if you need access to a ballot marking device that you have the right to request one. Um, so just trying to really get information to voters about uh, what their rights are. Know your rights. Under the Voting Rights Act, New Yorkers may bring an interpreter to the voting booth. This could be a friend, family member, or poll worker, but can't be your employer or union rep. You'll both be required to sign a form. All poll sites must be ADA compliant. Look for signs that mark the accessible entrances. You can also request use of a ballot marking device. And you have the right to ask election workers for help or bring voter information with you. Let's show the world. We are New Yorkers. We are voters. I think we'll have to fix that in post. Okay, <laughs> sorry everyone. Um, and lastly, I just want to let folks know that today we were able to um, launch a partnership with Curb, the um, taxi app for early voting. They're going to be offering $5 off rides during the early voting period for the first 5,000 uh, riders and the code will be vote early. So um, data has shown that the farther away you live from your early voting site, the less likely you are to use it. Um, particularly now as we try to avoid crowds and lines. We really want folks to use early voting. Um, it's amazing. Two weekends, early morning hours, uh, evening hours, as some of the members here right said. Um, so please share that widely, and then that'll be going up on our social channels very soon as well. Uh, thank you very much. And if we are able to uh, paste some of those links to the videos, uh, 
If you share it with our staff, we will get it into the Q&A so folks can watch it on their own. Uh, so thank you for the presentation. Thank you for sharing some of our rights as voters. Uh, and just to reiterate, you can bring most folks. Uh, for me, I, I've got a two and a half year old daughter and I, I would say she probably has a stronger voting record than many fo folks. She, she comes with me to every single election, whether it's a special election, a presidential primary or federal election or general election. Uh, she knows her way around the ballot box already. Uh, so next, I'd like to welcome Jarrett Berg from Vote Early uh, New York. Uh, I, I, you can tell from the name of its organization what is most important to him. And uh, if you can join me in welcoming Jarrett. Thank you, Council Member Kalos, for organizing uh, this important program uh, at such a critical time as we head into this final sprint to Election Day. Um, and to our Attorney General, who's fighting to protect voting rights, thank you for what you do. Uh, and my state senator as well, Liz Kruger, for your work in Albany. Um, so uh, there are now three ways to vote. And the key here for folks is that early action protects your rights. Flexible options in an emergency help protect our rights. Uh, and my greatest concern now is that uh, folks in Albany, uh, folks like myself can fight and try to, try to create these options and make sure that voting is convenient, but they're only as good as our ability to get the word out there. So uh, for those who tune in to a program organized by your local and state officials, it's incredibly important to help amplify this message. Uh, so what we did last year was build out a nonpartisan education nonprofit called Vote Early New York, focused on making these options uh, clear and easy so that voters are aware of their, their rights uh, and can make an informed plan uh, that's right for them, that's right for their loved ones. Uh, we thought coming into this year that the big education challenge would be uh, telling folks that they now have nine additional days to cast a ballot of at least 60 hours ahead of election day. Uh, and that was all before COVID-19 uh, and this concept of social distancing was in common parlance. Uh, this reform is now uh, probably the most useful tool in the toolkit for doing things that always made sense. Reducing the density uh, at poll sites, taking stress off the administrators and spreading that turnout pattern out and giving people the opportunity to vote uh, during times that are convenient for them. Uh, so in New York City, folks have one assigned early voting site. Uh, that's a different rule than anywhere else, but it's important that people know you do have 64 hours uh, to vote ahead of election day. That's a massive expansion uh, of convenience and access, and we want people to really consider this option. Uh, that's in addition to the third option, which is brand new for this year, uh, the ability to vote by absentee ballot, uh, which is available to any New Yorker uh, who's concerned about contracting or spreading uh, uh, COVID-19 or other illness. Uh, but if you can wear a mask and you've internalized uh, these, the, the, the practices that we uh, have all adopted this year, if you can venture out and do that grocery shop once a week, uh, twice a week, once every two weeks to do basic errands, please consider voting early and in person. Uh, and it's, it's incredibly important that people think about these options, find your early voting site, uh, and figure out what makes the most sense uh, given your own circumstance. Um, and so there are weekend options. Uh, there are at least two evenings where the polls will be open to 8 p.m. There's 88 sites across New York City. Uh, so we do anticipate that there will be a lot of interest in voting this year. I can tell you folks from experience that on on the even years, whether it's 2018 or on the presidential election in New York City on election day, there are long lines, uh, not necessarily at every poll site uh, at every hour of the day, 6 a.m. to 9 p.m. Uh, but uh, we know that, that when, when we say long lines, we don't mean the definition of long lines, 30 minutes. We mean an hour and a half or more. You overlay the pandemic on top of this. People are rightfully uh, concerned. And this, the long lines, it's a suppressive effect. Uh, and it will, it will hamper turnout, especially uh, if people encounter that kind of thing and they've waited until that last opportunity to vote. So nobody should do that uh, that doesn't have to. At least consider your options uh, before deciding what you'll do. Help your loved ones do the same. Uh, the New York City Board of Elections has a great website uh, compared to the other localities. So check out vote.nyc. The poll site locator works really well. Um, and we've also built out a resource library. Again, I think uh, for, for attendees and speakers on this program, the best thing you can do is use your platform to help amplify these options. 
uh, Democracy NYC is doing great work. And uh, we have graphics um, and model posts. We have one pagers on your three options, uh, but they're only as good as our ability to get the word out. So thanks so much council member for organizing and for everyone uh, for all that you do. Happy to take questions and thrilled to be here. Uh, thank you very much. Our uh, third and final speaker uh, is a commissioner for the State Board of Elections. The Board of Elections is a government entity, but it is a bipartisan. And under the state law, uh, you must have a, a Republican and Democratic bipartisan representation. So we have a Republican and Democratic commissioner. And uh, so we have uh, uh, commission, the Democratic commissioner for the New York State Board of Elections, uh, Doug Kellner, who will go into the uh, details of the uh, ballot uh, and, and anything that wasn't already covered and specifically how the third party voting is going to work this year. Thank you, council member. Uh, I want to reiterate what everyone else has said, uh, which is uh, make a plan now on how you're going to vote. You've got these three options. Uh, I join in urging people who can do it to plan now to do early voting as the best option. Early voting is uh, the best option for several reasons. Um, Historically, the lines have not been long. Your vote actually counts on election night. It's part of the election night returns. And um, issues that come up with uh, technical problems with absentee voting are avoided if you go in person and vote early. But uh, we recognize that not everybody is able to do that and New York has given everybody the right to do an absentee ballot. If you do an absentee ballot, be sure to um, make that application now. Don't wait. Um, uh, uh, the post office is a reasonable option, but if um, you don't trust the post office, you can deliver the ballot in person or someone else can deliver it for you to any early voting site or any election day uh, poll site. Um, uh, and then as uh, others have said, um, election day poll sites will be uh, available. <laughs> um, the uh, City Board of Elections is doing a very good job at uh, planning for social distancing, but because of that social distancing and the historic uh, problems uh, with the with the large turnout on presidential general elections uh, expect that you may have to wait in line uh, on election day if you choose that method so that even though it may be a little bit of a schlep to get to your early voting site um, you do have nine different days to choose from in order to make that schlep and uh, Certainly that's my recommendation is uh, the best uh, alternative is to do early voting. Now, um, they've asked me to address uh, something that's uh, unique in New York, which is our uh, uh, fusion ballot uh, system. Uh, New York is one of only three states that provide for fusion voting. What does that mean? It means that, um, uh, each recognized political party gets to nominate a candidate and a candidate can be nominated by more than one political party. Uh, in order to be, a, we have six recognized political parties at this time now. Uh, the Democrats, the Republicans, a conservative party, the Working Families Party, the SAM Party and the Libertarian Party. Um, the law has been changed on what constitutes a, re a recognized political party so that uh, this year for the first time, you will only be a recognized political party if you get 130,000 votes for president or um, 
a percentage of uh, the total vote, but the 130,000 is really going to be the uh, uh, decisive number. Uh, uh, the conservative uh, party always gets, uh, well, the Democrats and Republicans easily get that number. The conservative party uh, has uh, always exceeded that number. Working families, however, is pretty close. Uh, and whether they get 130,000 votes for president is not uh, so clear yet. Uh, the SAM and Libertarian parties, uh, 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 well, the SAM party has, ne has, has not even uh, nominated a candidate for president and vice president. So they are uh, uh, not going to be a recognized party in January. Um, and uh, the Libertarian Party uh, just eked out 50,000 votes for governor last time. So uh, that's going to be a tough uh, change for them to get 130,000 votes for president. Um, as uh, Senator Kruger indicated, um, the parties uh, uh, can nominate the same candidates. Um, but you can only vote for one. So uh, you can choose to vote uh, for president. Uh, Joe Biden is on the Democratic line and on the working families line. Um, Donald Trump is on the Republican line and on the conservative line. And you can vote for those candidates on either of those lines and your vote will count. Um, uh, but uh, uh, it'll only count once. Um, also, um, uh, uh, on the east side, uh, there is the anomaly that the uh, uh, Democratic candidates, uh, that, that the Democratic Party was not able to do the technical paperwork necessary to make a nomination for assembly. So you have uh, 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 Rebecca Seawright, who is the incumbent assemblywoman uh, running uh, on uh, an independent line uh, buried in the uh, uh, right corner of the ballot. So uh, people who want to vote for to reelect assemblywoman uh, Seawright have to uh, uh, make a special effort to uh, look for her name in that corner of the ballot. Um, uh, so um, I, I think that covers the third party issue and uh, maybe uh, council member, we can uh, start turning to uh, some of the questions that people asked. Um, if you like, I could start to answer uh, some of them. Yeah, yes, please. So I think the, uh, we, we have questions relating to uh, early voting, uh, absentee ballots, third party process, counting ballots, drop boxes, and then we have one question, two, two questions, one about just how uh, uh, structural questions, and then there's a, a broader question about the peaceful transition of power that we just received through the Q&A. Uh, so the, the, what, for early voting, we have a question, which is, uh, I know it's impossible to predict, but are long lines expected for early voting? Uh, and another question is, if you've already received your mail-in ballot, but have decided to vote in person instead, what is the process so they can be sure you're not voting twice? Should you bring your uncompleted mail-in ballot with you as proof? So I'm happy to take this one, council member, uh, these two. Uh, so um, I, I think the, the second one is, is an important one. Uh, they're both important, but um, so 50 states, 50 different election laws. Uh, and uh, because our, our politics and our news cycle is nationalized, uh, you can expect that if you hear uh, commentary on this issue on TV, um, it's, they're probably not talking about New York, but folks should be aware that New York election law uh, is pretty airtight on this question. Um, there is not a risk of voting twice uh, because Article 9 of the election law clearly sets out, uh, and this is a voter-friendly uh, thing that allows people to mail their ballots um, postmarked up until election day. Uh, so there are several days where ballots can be received after. Article nine of our election law requires that before 
ballots uh, that come by mail are, are canvassed and, and tabulated, that they first check to see the list of who voted in person. Uh, the adoption of electronic poll books will make that process a lot cleaner, uh, but for a voter who has voted in person, that mail ballot is put aside uh, and will not be processed. So um, that right there makes sure that's the answer to the question of why you can vote in person, uh, even if you've requested your ballot, uh, if it never shows up, if it does show up, if you just decide you'd prefer to be in person, even if you return that mail ballot, there is no risk that a voter in that situation would be voting twice. I would recommend- So they don't need to bring, they don't need to bring proof that they didn't use their absentee ballot. They could actually mail in the absentee ballot and still vote in person. That's right. Um, I, I think uh, I would recommend that if a person is planning to go vote in person, uh, and has already requested and received one. Uh, it's, it's not a bad thing to have that just in case you end up not voting in person, but you're welcome to destroy that ballot and trash it. You're welcome to bring it to the poll site and ask them to void it if you'd like, but none of that is necessary. None of that is required. Uh, New York law is set up in such a way that people can mail their ballots up until election day with a postmark, though we definitely don't recommend that people wait that long. Consider using the Dropbox options too. Uh, and can someone repeat the, the first question? Was it about Dropboxes? Uh, well, actually on the Dropbox, can you explain further? So uh, the person wants to bring their blank ballot, but are they allowed to bring a completed ballot to an early vote site uh, and uh, then just cast that ballot there without having to touch anyone or wait in line? It's a great question. And I tried to put this in the chat too. So. New York set up a Dropbox program where people can return ballots without uh, relying on the post office and the snail mail by bringing their completed uh, sealed and signed ballot to any early voting site or election day site in the city, in the five boroughs, or to any election, board of elections office. Uh, by the governor's executive order, uh, those voters must have the ability to do so without waiting in line with in-person voters, and it's intended to be a contactless process. So the answer to that is yes, you can drop off your ballot there, uh, and uh, if you decide to vote in person, uh, there's no action that you need to take to, to void your absentee ballot. And the other question was uh, whether or not you expect long lines on election mm -hmm. day. Sorry, at the early voting sites. I think what we've seen so far around the country is that people are very enthusiastic to vote. And uh, as, as exciting as that is, I consider it uh, a suppressive effect if people are required uh, to wait in five hour lines to, to early vote, uh, even if they have plenty of time to, to do that over several weeks. Thank, thank goodness they have several weeks. Yeah. Uh, I, I would expect that in New York on that first Saturday of early voting, there's going to be a lot of excitement. Uh, especially during that first hour or two. So for folks that are looking to avoid crowds, uh, look at the hours, look at the options. We have them all posted at voteearlyny.org and find a quiet five minutes uh, during those nine days. Well, Jared, I, I just want to stress that um, historically in the two elections where we've used early voting, um, uh, there have been no crowds and no lines. And the early voting sites, New York City Board of Elections has done a very good job in organizing those sites efficiently. I wish they would do the same for their election day poll sites, but um, uh, I don't think that uh, uh, people are going to experience uh, significant lines. And also, um, uh, the way the early voting is set up is that if it should turn out that there are significant lines um, uh, on the first day. Um, the system allows New York City to add additional resources in order to uh, avoid lines in the later days of early voting. Um, so I, I again wanna stress to people that the best option for them is early voting and um, in the unlikely event that uh, you wanna go on Saturday and you experience a line on Saturday, well then come back on Sunday or Monday when uh, uh, there may not be such a long line. But uh, uh, I'm anticipating that there will be lines at, at most election day poll sites 
and that there will be very short lines, if, uh, if at all, at the early voting sites. So Doug raises a really good point here. Uh, this is a new concept for New York. Uh, we call it dynamic voter protection. It means that if there are resourcing problems on that first day of early voting, that the Board of Elections is now required to take action to remedy that. Uh, it has to be done within 24 hours. Frankly, it should be done uh, sooner. But the point is, we are no longer in a system uh, where people are shrugging and sort of saying, well, you know, it's too bad, but there's, there's no time. There is time. There are times to identify issues uh, and to remedy them. Uh, we're very excited about that reform. If, if you want to skip the line, if you're concerned about any line on early voting, you can request an absentee ballot, you can fill it out, and then you can go to any early vote site, any election site to do so early. I see we have an- uh, and, and Ben, you don't have to bring it yourself. You can have somebody else bring it for you. And also I made a mistake in my presentation on the political parties. Uh, there is also the Green Party in New York. Um, and uh, I owe them an apology for leaving them off my list. Okay. Uh, Nicole? Yes, so just wanted to add um, that the drop boxes are not what you may have seen in the news in other states. So they're not going to be outside where you can go at any time. Um, so just make sure to check when the early voting hours are, if you're dropping them off at an early voting site or election day is 6 a.m. to 9 p.m. And then one big difference between this election and the primary is that the absentee ballots, you have to add postage. So if you're not dropping it off and you're putting it in the mail, just please remember to add postage. How much postage should I add to my absentee ballot? And uh, what if I already mailed my absentee ballot with only one stamp? So uh, one of the little known secrets that Tish James and her attorney general's litigation uh, exposed last week is that there is a national policy on the US Postal Service that they are to deliver absentee ballots to election officials even if there is no postage or inadequate postage. So we are, we are saying that you have a, a citizen's obligation to pay your postage when you mail your ballot. But if you don't put enough postage on it or you forget to put a stamp on it, the Postal Service is still going to deliver it to the Board of Elections. The reason service is but supposed to. <laughs> they're supposed to, just like they're supposed to postmark it. <laughs> uh, and and uh, if you just want to clue folks in on the joke about supposed to postmark it so folks understand what was going on in there, if they are, are not as, uh, aren't following this as much as some of All us. Right. Well, the, the, uh, the law says that um, uh, the Board of Elections is uh, required to count an absentee ballot that it receives after Election Day as long as it be, it's postmarked by Election Day. So um, uh, uh, there is a very small, there are a very small percentage of ballots uh, that board of, Boards of Elections receive that don't have postmarks. Uh, there was one batch of them that all happened in one assembly district in Brooklyn that uh, created a kerfluffle. Um, and there were about uh, 4,000 ballots received without postmarks from that one district in Brooklyn. But statewide, uh, there was less than 1,000 in all the other 149 assembly districts in the state. Um, so it's not a major problem, but just if you look at your own mail, occasionally you will get a letter that should have been postmarked, um, but the stamp is not postmarked. And that also happens with election mail from time to time. Uh, we have a uh, question about wh where somebody should vote early. If they go to vote.nyc and they click find your poll site, it will tell them there they can vote on election day or ahead of the, or for early vote. Uh, you can also go directly to findmypollsite.vote.nyc. I just wanna share the, uh, the times and dates in New York City only. 
uh, that is different in other counties, but in New York City, uh, it is Saturday and Sunday, 10 a.m. to 4 p.m., October 24th, October 25th. Uh, then on Monday the 26th, it's 7 a.m. to 3 p.m. Tuesday the 27th, it is 12 to 8, as well as on Wednesday the 28th. On uh, Thursday, October 29th, it is 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. Uh, Friday the 30th is from 7 a.m. to 3 p.m. And on Saturday, October 31st, uh, to Sunday, November 1st is the last day for early vote and both those days are 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. We're gonna wrap up our early vote questions and take us to the uh, question on absentee uh, ballots. Uh, we have two questions uh, that were submitted early. I put my name in for voting by mail online but do not remember the details. I have not received a ballot in the mail. Should I uh, be concerned. And then another question, I don't have a confirmation number for the Board of Elections for my mail-on ballot. I mailed on October 6th, so I cannot track and confirm as we refer So what should I do? So let me just jump in on this question uh, because I, I, I literally wrote the law on this one. Uh, so in 2015, I, I authored a law saying you should be able to track your ballot. I actually, uh, I don't know if I've said it publicly before, but I should definitely say it now. I did it because Mark Favors, uh, who I've known for a while from voter protection efforts, came to me and said, I, I'm an absentee voter in Colorado. How come I can track my absentee ballot in Colorado, but my family members can't track it here? And so I said, that, that's a valid question. We should do it here. And I couldn't get the Board of Elections to do it, so I passed a law. Uh, it took, we passed it in 2016. It took until now to get them to actually do it. Uh, I think mostly in part to Governor Cuomo's uh, order. If you go to nycabsentee.com, you can request an absentee ballot. And if you go to the very bottom of the page, uh, in small text at the bottom, it says absentee tracking. You can also go to nycabsentee.com slash tracking. And if you go there, the first thing it shows you is the confirmation code. But if you click on the second button there under track my absentee, under voter information, you can put in the same information you put to get your absentee ballot to begin with and keep track of it. Uh, but uh, I guess my answer would be, uh, it is, you, you are, we are still weeks away from election day. So if you wanna vote absentee, uh, we, we have your information. We will let you know, we will work with you to track on the website. And if for whatever reason you're not being included, we'll work with you uh, and, and even Commissioner Kellner to make sure you get your absentee. But I'll also turn it over to if anyone else has anything additive. Okay, I, I, I got that one, great. Uh, the, we have another, we have a question about the third party process. Uh, somebody asks, I got a message from a third party saying they needed a certain number of votes to stay on the ballot. What does this mean? Well, as I said before, uh, the new law requires uh, a political party to get 130,000 votes for president. Um, and uh, that's uh, easy for the Democrats and the Republicans, um, but uh, it's a stretch for the other parties. Thank you very much. Uh, we have a question about counting ballots, two of them. Is there a way to track whether your in-person or mail-in vote is counted via barcode or some other technology, or should people photograph their ballot before it's mailed or scanned at the poll site? And will the Board of Elections begin opening counting ballots when they're received? If not, what is the date that ballots will begin getting counted? Well, there are a few parts of that question, but um, New York has uh, uh, the most secure uh, in-person voting system of any state in the country. Um, we use uh, um, ballot scanning for early voting and for election day voting. Um, those scanners are um, not connected in any way, shape, or form to the internet. And indeed, uh, in New York, um, even the systems that are used to program those machines um, uh, for the uh, particular election setup are not allowed to be connected to the internet or for any other purpose. Um, so if you um, vote with a, um, a scannable ballot uh, on election day or early voting, um, those votes are uh, recorded 
electronically and those go into the unofficial election night totals. And then there is a very uh, stringent audit process to confirm that the machines have accurately counted the votes. So, and I could go into many more details, but uh, 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 if you vote in person, you can be pretty confident that uh, your vote will be counted. Um, now, uh, there was a second part to the question, Ben. You're muted. Thank you. If somebody is voting by mail, how can they be sure that uh, their ballot is received and even when it is received, uh, what, what are the next steps? So, so yeah, uh, and when they can be counted, that's, um, and if it isn't counted, will they ever find out? All right. Well, you went into the tracking system and, uh, in New York city, at least, uh, you have the benefit of that tracking system to see whether the, uh, city board, re uh, received the ballot. Um, and, um, uh, there, you can determine uh, whether the ballot was counted by uh, looking at the voter history, which is available um, much later, uh, perhaps at the end of November. Um, because of New York's uh, unique system that uh, Jared Berg described earlier, um, New York cannot begin to count the absentee ballots until several days after the election. And um, this is uh, the combination of New York's very liberal procedures that are voter friendly, uh, as well as the security procedure to make sure that nobody's ballot, nobody votes twice or that nobody's vote is counted twice. So New York, for example, um, uh, in the law, which you know, goes back to New York's preference for people to vote in person, says that if the excuse for your absentee ballot is no longer valid on election day, you still have to vote in person even though you mailed in your absentee ballot. Now, that law is a little bit uh, out of date because you no longer really need an excuse or everybody has an excuse because of COVID this year. But um, the law, um, still says that even though you've mailed in an absentee ballot, you can go and vote in person and your in-person vote will count. And then when um, they start to canvas the absentee ballots, they have to check on whether you voted in person. And uh, if you did, then the absentee ballot will be uh, discarded and will not be opened. Um, um, so, so New York has that fail-safe device to prevent people from voting twice, um, but it means that uh, the count of absentee ballots is delayed. And so in New York City, they will only start counting absentee ballots on the Monday after Election Day. Forgive me, I'm kind of like a kid in a candy store and I, I love asking Doug Kellner questions because he knows so many of the answers. Uh, the state passed a bunch of bills uh, relating to absentee ballots. I recall one of them is theoretically supposed to allow people to correct mistakes on their absentee ballots. Will that, what are the details on that and will it be in effect for this election? Uh, uh, it is in effect for this election. It's a good reform that the legislature added, but it does add additional complexity to the process for boards of elections to count uh, the absentee ballots. So when an absentee ballot envelope is received by the board of elections, and that could be, this process is already going on, um, the board of elections is required to look at the envelope, well, they open the outer envelope and pull out the oath envelope um, that should be sealed and contains the, the ballot. And they are to examine the oath envelope to make sure that the voter has um, uh, signed the oath. And uh, uh, this new procedure says that even if they haven't dated it, if you got it before election day, then you, the date doesn't matter. But 
certainly uh, if I'm telling voters, make sure you've signed and dated the oath envelope and then make sure you've sealed it. And if there's a problem with it, the Board of Elections will get in touch with the voter. Uh, if the voter is given an email address or a phone number, they'll get it by email or phone. Um, otherwise, they'll get it in the mail. And the voter has five days to correct that defect. Um, and uh, uh, those defect letters can go out even after election day. In, in which case the voter has a little bit less time to correct. Um, but it uh, uh, tries to add a margin of, uh, uh, of error for, for voters to correct errors, um, but it also delays the uh, completion of the count of the absentee ballots. Thank you. Uh, we're now gonna go into uh, the questions about drop boxes. Uh, two that were submitted online, will election drop boxes at early voting sites be inside or outside the site? What will the procedures for either of these be? Uh, will the drop boxes for mail ballots uh, be near the early voting sites? Uh, Martha Becker asks, will, where will the drop boxes be on the Upper East Side? Uh, will Brightbill ask, could you tell us more about the ballot drop boxes, where they are, how we know they are safe, uh, re-California? Ben, why don't you start by telling us where the early voting sites are for the east side, <laughs> if you know. I do know, I sent them out in an email earlier. Uh, we, we definitely have one at Wagner. We have another one uh, down at uh, the Hunter Brookdale campus and we have one in East Harlem and we will pull that from my newsletter. If you didn't get it, it's at bencalos.com, but we will pull that right now. Uh, so, so those are the questions for, the, for that quiz. Uh, we'll get that quick answer. And if somebody else can answer the rest while I scramble to find the third site on well, serving my right. calculation. And, and let me just say that you have to go to the correct site for early voting, but you or anyone else you give the absentee ballot envelope to can deliver that envelope to the drop box at the early voting site. The drop box will be at the information table at the entrance to the site. Um, so uh, uh, <coughs> I believe all of those east side sites, uh, the entrance will be, the, the drop box will be inside, but it'll be very close to the entrance and you don't have to wait online to get to the Dropbox. You can just go right up to that Dropbox. It has a big American flag on it and it says, put your absentee ballot envelope here. Um, make sure the envelope's been properly signed and dated, but you can just drop it right in um, to that box without waiting in any line. Um, so if I can uh, just, it looks like Nicole has an answer. So just to be clear, uh, on TV, in the newspapers, I keep seeing these metal boxes that are outdoors and uh, look like uh, they're basically a postage box, but just for ballots. Uh, and so uh, is that what they're going to look like or is nope. it going to look more uh, uh, look I'll ask like the old fashioned ballot box. They're going to look like a cardboard box in color, colored cardboard in New York City with an American flag on it and saying uh, vote, but, but it's gonna be a box with a slot on the top that looks like a ballot box, but it's, it, that's the drop box for absentee ballot envelopes. Uh, Nicole, uh, did you have it's any not like that? what's gone on in California. Um, basically, the, the um, uh, leaders in the legislature and the governor and those of us uh, at the Board of Elections spent a lot of effort thinking about this because there were many good government groups who were saying, we need drop boxes, we need drop boxes, we need drop boxes everywhere. And the election official said, you guys don't understand all the problems if you put drop boxes everywhere. And, uh, and we came up with this solution and uh, I'm very proud and comfortable that this was the right decision to do it this way. 
Uh, Nicole, did you have anything to add? Yeah, and just to clarify, um, this was always the case that you could drop off an absentee ballot at an early voting or election day site. Um, I think this is just a way to make it easier for voters and to communicate out that you can drop off a ballot. And um, as far as if it's safe, the, the ballots will not remain in that box that Doug described. Um, they will be emptied and put into a secure um, vessel. And I think actually every day that they will be um, get brought over to the Board of Elections, they don't stay in that box. Um, so there's no reason to worry about putting your ballot in there. Thank you. And uh, okay, so we've gotten through most of the main questions that were submitted before the event. Uh, we've got about 19 minutes left, so I want to thank you. I want to thank anyone who has stayed paying attention and stayed engaged as we get into the minutia of election law. This is literally what I do for fun. Uh, yeah, that's actually true. Uh, and so uh, we, we have <clears throat> a question from, uh, give me one second. Uh, we have a question uh, from Will Brightbill. Was any consideration given to using outdoor sites for early voting? If not, why? Um, so Will, the, the City Board of Elections chooses the early voting and election day poll sites. Um, as far as doing it outside, I can't speak for them, but um, I do know that there's a lot of considerations such as um, you need electricity and um, you need to make sure that ADA compliant and access to a bathroom for the poll workers and it has to be, you know, a certain amount of space. And of course, um, if it's outside, you want to make sure that the elements don't interfere with um, the machine. So um, it's, there is a lot to take into consideration, but um, the Board of Elections ultimately is the entity that chooses the sites. Uh, this question I'm going to uh, direct at uh, Commissioner Kellner, uh, which is how, this is from Motoko uh, Shoboji, uh, forgive me if I, I did not pronounce it correctly, uh, how and who decides election districts and polling sites? Well, as, as Nicole said, uh, the City Board of Elections decides both of those. And I guess uh, when people say a, a government board, they may, uh, who, who, who appoints the Board of Elections Commissioners? Uh, who, who are they accountable to? In New York City, there are 10 elections commissioners, one from each party from each borough. And those commissioners are um, nominated by the political party committee in their county and the city council has to approve the nomination and in some circumstances the members of the city council from the same political party can appoint the commissioner if there is no recommendation from the political party. Um, so it's a complicated process, but uh, uh, the commissioners are essentially accountable to their county leaders and to the members of the city council from their county from the same political party. And Councilman Kalos, uh, you've been very involved in that process. You may have something to add to that. I, I would say stay tuned for the city council tomorrow, uh, where we will be going through both processes with regards to elections commissioners. And uh, I will be using my, my vote to uh, ask for the board, the, the elections to run much more smoothly. Uh, we have a question from uh, Alicia Flood on Facebook. Uh, given the contention of this election, is there a plan for safety of voters against any signs, attempts, or reports of intimidation? Uh, this may be a reference to the fact that uh, uh, elected officials, uh, including uh, Trump, have uh, asked people to bring arms to poll sites throughout our nation. Yeah, council member, it might also be in reference to the fact that the nominee to the Supreme Court couldn't unequivocally just say that voter intimidation is illegal. It's, it's unfortunate that that sort of 
where we find ourselves. I want to make sure that everybody knows that the Attorney General's office has set up an election hotline. They built out an online form. If people feel intimidated, if they see something that feels like it could be intimidating to others, uh, see something, say something, this is incredibly important that everyone who's eligible to vote be able to do so uh, in free and fair elections. And there is a police officer at every poll site um, by state law. Um, and uh, uh, I don't anticipate that there will be a problem, but if there is a problem, uh, this is something that the New York City Police Department um, spends considerable effort planning for, um, especially because they commit such a large uh, part of their police force to election duty. Uh, the, the, the final question goes to the, the heart of our uh, democracy. This one is for um, Avi Gross, which does, uh, does the city council law enforcement, other agencies have a contingency plan in the event that President Trump loses the election but refuses to vacate the White House based on claims of which I will just add that he is already making regarding voter fraud. Gonna see if anyone else wants to answer. We are a nation of laws and um, uh, even Trump will find limits if he uh, abuses his authority. And uh, I uh, am predicting that this is not gonna happen. Uh, Attorney General James said uh, one key thing is that uh, if the election night returns are decisive, then that'll put an end to this very quickly. But um, I think we will find that uh, um, most Republicans believe in America and they believe in the rule of law and uh, will not uh, follow Trump down the rabbit hole. Thank you very much. Uh, at this point, we, we've gone through all the questions that were submitted ahead of time. Uh, we've gone through all of the uh, questions that uh, people have uh, submitted uh, on social media as well as through Zoom. Uh, this will remain on uh, social media for people to watch on Facebook and Twitter. It will also be recast on Manhattan Neighborhood Network. I want to uh, thank everyone who's uh, been speaking tonight. I want to thank all the elected officials who joined us earlier. I want to uh, thank uh, Nicole Migliori, uh, Jarrett Berg, uh, Commissioner Doug Kellner for joining with us today. Uh, if you can just uh, share uh, where people can email if they have questions or where they can visit. To, to If you can share your website and your email for folks who want to learn more uh, and what have you, and for the commissioner, if there's a general contact information for the city or state boards. Uh, starting with Nicole. Yeah, sure. Um, so the website that I usually recommend is voting.nyc. It's the Campaign Finance Board's website. Uh, really easy to navigate. Of course, you can always go to the Board of Elections website as well, which is vote.nyc. Um, and I'm happy to take any questions directly if folks have them. It, my email is n for Nicole, my last name, M-I-G-L-I-O-R-E, at cityhall.nyc.gov. Uh, so we've organized the three ways to vote along with a lot of the uh, nuance that you've heard here about your voting rights for early voting uh, and mail balloting at voteearlyny.org. We also have a bunch of multilingual graphics and model social media posts. Folks can reach us at tips at voteearlyny.org with questions uh, and comments, information about your voting experience. And uh, people are probably better off going to the websites that uh, Nicole recommended uh, because the New York City Board of Elections is the entity that actually runs the elections in New York, but the state board's website is elections.ny.gov. And uh, there is uh, lots of election information there as well. I wanna thank our three panelists. I wanna thank everyone who uh, watched 
uh, online and participated. If you saw or heard anything that you thought was particularly interesting, uh, please consider sharing it. Uh, as you've heard from a lot of other people, uh, given the Supreme Court's order, you have until Friday morning at 5.59 a.m. to complete your census. Please go do so. Uh, I think you've heard in more than one way, uh, the fastest way for you to vote is using your absentee ballot. Get that absentee and, and you can go in, drop it at an early voting site. You can drop it on election day. Uh, you can vote early. Uh, you, you can uh, vote but just no matter what, please vote. I want to thank everyone for joining us today and uh, thank all the viewers. Uh, go vote. Thank you, Ben. Thank you.